Welcome everyone to our Global Leadership Summit. I'm Peggy Polonis, Chair of Ideagen Athens, and it is my pleasure today to welcome Dr. Gule Barbaroshoglu, who is working to improve life and living on the planet and helping to achieve one or more of the global goals through education. Dr. Barbaroshoglu is an industrial engineer. She's an academic administrator. She has served as rector of Bogajisi University in Turkey, and she is currently president of Hisar School, a prestigious international school in Turkey. Welcome. Welcome, good day. Thank you so much, Peggy. I am delighted to be here with you today, and thank you for your kind invitation and for your very uh, kind uh, introduction. Uh, yes, I have uh, dedicated my whole life uh, to educating young people uh, and uh, to contribute to the development uh, of humanity. So uh, this is a big opportunity for me to express myself. Thank you. That's wonderful. And I have some really, really great questions. And I know, because I, I know that you are a leader in education in more ways than one. You really are, you know, you're the head of the of a K-12 international school in Turkey. But prior to that, you have also been president or you have been uh, uh, working at the university level. And so you know both worlds. What do you think we can do to best prepare students with 21st century skills yeah. in both way, in both worlds? Well, thank you so much. Yes, it's true. I spent uh, 35 years in the higher education system, and now I am in the K-12 system. Well, knowing both worlds, I strongly believe that they have a lot in common, yeah. and they share the same spirit and ecosystem of academia. Moreover, my experience has shown that the quality of higher education is uniquely dependent upon the quality of the primary and secondary education. Uh, well, we know that the foundation of the development is completed at a young age, and we have many opportunities for character development during early years. If the development of 21st century skills is not completed before the higher education stage, the university education can hardly be expected to provide these to youth. So this dependency between the uh, higher education system and uh, K-12 system should be formally recognized in designing the education system in the 21st century. And these two systems should be integrated to enhance the development of uh, 21st century skills required by global citizenship. So the first thing I want to emphasize in the, is the integration of the higher education system and the K-12 education system. I strongly believe that the development of 21st century skills and the capability of demonstrating and practicing these is a transformative, lifelong, and active process, which is constructed through inquiry, critical thinking, feedback, and reflection. This cycle starts in preschool, continues to high school and then to the university. And during this cycle, educators in all levels should teach the freedom of choice and motivate the students to own their learning process through their personal interest. So these are some of the very general remarks I want to make. And furthermore, both worlds should apply a teaching and learning approach that, that inspires, challenges, informs, and constantly searches for methods of improvement. And of course, in order to achieve this, uh, we have to do many things and we should design our learning environments accordingly. We have to provide diverse opportunities for professional development for our academic faculty, and we have to offer countless learning experiences uh, to our students. Uh, well, I want. I don't want to go over the details, but I think throughout the um, conversation we will focus on technology and social emotional learning. But there is one more point I wish to emphasize. The last but not the least, it's about the governance of the institu institutions. 
is the governance of the educational institutions. Whether it's a preschool or a university, we education leaders should provide their participative democratic governance to inspire all our students accordingly. In our daily management, I think we should respect and apply inclusion, diversity, and all the other values we have in our mission statements. Only then we can teach by example. So these are some of the general uh, uh, remarks I want to make when I'm comparing uh, these two systems. And indeed, education is a, a whole system. It's a complete system. There are not indeed two different systems at all. You know, you made some very, very important points. And I know that in the past, higher education used to inform uh, K-12, but it's also important for K-12 to have a voice and oftentimes yes. to inform higher education. So that partnership is very, very important, as you mentioned. And schools like ours, where different nationalities come together under the same roof, um, really it's important to raise awareness about global issues and promote international mindedness and respect the different, of different cultures and so on and so forth. I know that in your school you work with the sustainable development goals towards raising awareness about global issues. How do you do that? Can you tell us a little bit about that and why do you think that's important? Yeah. Well, in line with the school vision, uh, HISAR has always tried to build awareness about the wider world, sustainability issues, and to educate students to play an active role for the betterment of humanity and to make meaningful contributions to the planet. Uh, well, this is inherent in our genes, indeed. Two years ago, we established a Green Campus Committee, which has been providing the necessary coordination for environmental citizenship and to make the environmental awareness an integral part of our students' lives. However, this year, as of September of this year, this our school became a member of the Global Schools Program. We signed a pledge and we committed ourselves to follow the sustainable development goals as the compass of our educational philosophy. Two of our teachers were accepted to the Global Schools Advocacy Program and they were awarded to become a Global School Advocates. Then we bolstered sustainability studies under their leadership uh, within the uh, jurisdiction of our uh, innovation center. And furthermore, we designated this academic year as the year of sustainability and decided to apply a whole institution approach, mainstreaming sustainability in all aspects of the school. Uh, it, well, it involves rethinking the curriculum, redesigning uh, campus operations, the organizational culture, uh, monitoring student participation, leadership and management, and we try to uh, reimagine community relations, everything from the point, uh, point of view of sustainability. Sustainability has become the uh, skeleton and the main framework of our school. Well, in regard to this, we organize uh, certain trainings for our teachers under the leadership of uh, our advocates and under the leadership of the Innovation Center. I think we organized four or five sessions. And in all those sessions, uh, SDGs were discussed in detail and we used the UN training videos. And of course, as for the uh, student learning, all uh, unit plans, course plans, UBD plans were enriched with uh, ESD approach and all our students at all levels are assigned to carry out interdisciplinary uh, SDG projects. And furthermore, we have decided to organize a lecture series this year uh, where we will be inviting prominent experts uh, to really uh, discuss these issues and to address uh, the Hisar community and to increase awareness within the whole community. And uh, Louisa Winton, uh, who is the UN permanent representative for Turkey, will be our first keynote speaker so that uh, we will be introducing uh, these topics uh, to a wider community. 
So yeah, I mean, uh, sustainability uh, is now the main focus of our school. That's excellent. And I, you know that the, the last sustainable development goal of the UN is uh, talks about partnerships and the importance of partnerships. And I know that we go way back, ACS Athens and HISAR School, in terms of coming together as partners towards like-minded projects and like-minded philosophies. Do you, but why do you believe that partnerships are so important uh, towards accomplishing these goals? Yeah. Well, uh, Peggy, uh, Hisa, as you know, Hisa School was established 25 years ago. And since then, its mission has been to discover and develop true potential, true critical thinking, effective collaboration, and meaningful co co uh, contributions as world citizens. So collaboration and partnership has always been a very important concept in our mission. So uh, his our school has worked hard to make every effort to provide opportunities for our students to collaborate with their peers, with adults, and with the wider world around them. Even at the age of four and five, our students are engaged in some collaborative activities. Well, uh, the, the world is changing very rapidly with more challenges uh, in technology and sustainability. And we know that technology, sustainability and knowledge go beyond geographical boundaries and they do not obey any physical barriers. And we know the accessibility and the speed of knowledge and the speed of knowledge dissemination through social media, social networks and various platforms is incredible. So, I mean, in such a high speed environment, so there are, uh, I think all the boundaries uh, will be lost. And maybe one day all the schools will merge to become just a single ca campus. So collaboration, I think, is okay. just uh, a way to share. So uh, we know that school partnerships have many benefits for students, school leaders, and teachers, of course. And uh, such partnerships help break down cultural barriers, crush stereotypes, help students learn better about global issues and become, become well-rounded individuals. So uh, partnerships and collaborations provide a platform to share best practices of curriculum development, professional development, and innovation. And of course, they facilitate student and teacher mobility. I mean, it, it has many, many, many benefits. And I believe that ACS and HISAR have many common objectives in terms of raising responsible global citizens and creating a diverse learning environment and providing opportunities to promote, support, and guide students' creative ideas. That's how our partnership started. Our students help each other to set up a learning environment in their respective schools where they uh, take control of their own learning. This collaborative experience resulted uh, in the establishment of our dear summit, uh, ISCI summit, which was inaugurated uh, at ACS Athens in December 2017. So I think we are, we are very proud and very pleased uh, with the organization of these summits uh, together with you. And our students inspired students in American Farm School and Pinewood American International School to be a part of the summit. And since then, uh, very proudly, every year, students from ACS, CSR, Pinewood, and AFS organize the summit. So I think uh, we have been very successful uh, to bring our students together. And I believe uh, these two schools will undertake many more projects in the future. But I'm very uh, positive personally. I'm very positive about school collaborations uh, across the borders all around the world. And I look forward to developing really global uh, partnerships. Likewise, I think the coming together, as you said, and sharing of stories and just putting out the, you know, the word and bringing more, more people on, on board can have more wide effects. Um, but at, let me go back to your um, you being an educator in, in two different worlds, as head of school at Hisar, but also as um, university educator. Um, where do you think that, how do you think that education is changing? 
what what is the future of education? What will it look like? Well, this is such a difficult question, and the answer is too long. Well, uh, two weeks ago, I wrote a paper on this topic, uh, but I'll try to make it as short as possible, of course. Well, uh, Peggy, uh, it is uh, necessary to anticipate the trends and emerging issues that are expected to gain importance in to, uh, tomorrow's education. We are well aware of the fact that technology, industry, business, and social life targets determine the educational outcomes. Yeah. On the one hand, we are faced with Industry 5.0. On the other hand, we are trying to reconcile with Society 5.0. As you very well know, Industry 5.0 includes more collaboration between humans and robots in cyber-physical system. And we know that the industry is headed towards such digital transformation will experience job losses in their regular workforce. While this transformation is likely to create more opportunities for jobs. Mm -hmm. The World Economic Forum estimates that by uh, 2025, the robot revolution might displace 85 million jobs, but uh, 97 million new roles could emerge, uh, emerge as a result of a new division between humans, machines, and algorithms. So this is one thing, technology. I don't want to give a list of technologies. It's a huge, uh, and there are some emerging technologies. So the digital uh, transformation is one major um, channel. Yeah. Another driving force is the amount of information that comes out of all digital systems, especially through sensors. Now, there is more information than there was before, and this vast amount of information becomes impossible to be processed by humans. This is where artificial intelligence comes in to extract meaning out of big data. And Society 5.0 is trying to design a smart society given this big data picture. So uh, we know that today's children will work uh, in new job types that do not yet exist with an increased premium on both digital and social emotional skills in the coming years. Yeah. Thus, it is obvious that the prime goal for schools and universities will be to create a fast learning, adaptive and dynamic talent pool. Well, the higher education system has sweetly responded to these developments all over the world. And I believe that universities in uh, 2030 will be open without walls, without walls. Uh, and um, it will be, uh, it will be uh, offering open science and open access. And the nature and the structure of the universities will be hybrid and they will be open as physical and virtual spaces. Now, coming to K-12, uh, this is our uh, dutiful responsibility to reset, redesign primary and secondary education systems and mm -hmm. co-design content and delivery that meet children's needs for this future. Uh, and in this regard, I will shortly recommend that the Education 4.0 initiative uh, is a good reference to better prepare the next generation of talent through primary and secondary education transformation. But in short, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, the pluralism of academics will emerge and the school system will and should heavily rely upon data and will move into an evidence-based world. Accordingly, uh, smart decisions will be and should be made with a research-based approach collaborating with universities to the best of learning science, with linkages to industry and business, with philanthropies to generate funding. Mm -hmm. And I think curriculum will be at the forefront of education and students will engage more with curriculum in web-based environments, maybe through social agents. Well, mm -hmm. I think we should, our schools should keep... Uh, uh, abreast of all these developments and trends. And I think we should not wait too long and we should put enabling capabilities in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's and, the shortest I can say, yeah. Yeah, 
and as a a female education leader uh you know across the world you you have these opportunities to provide the platform for equal op opportunity to education for for uh, different people different um especially females where you know um, uh, who are in not not in a position to have an education generally as educational institutions such as ours where for the most part the students that do attend have the privilege of receiving this education what do you think we can do to provide these opportunities to those who don't have access to education yeah um, especially uh, during the pandemic, uh, we uh, we felt this um, inequalities uh, at heart, and we know that COVID the pandemic uh, has simply worsened the systemic inequities that already existed in the education system. During the pandemic, it was of course inevitable to close schools, to slow down the epidemic, and to protect children. But we know that it disrupted their learning process. Some students around the world moved to distance learning that schools quickly implemented to remain connected. But many, particularly those from the most marginalized groups and underprivileged regions, didn't have access to digital learning resources or lacked the support, resilience, and engagement to learn on their own. So digital divide, which is the result of a bigger social, economic, and sometimes cultural issue, has become more obvious. So, uh, I, I mean, uh, I think uh, education inequity is a big, big, big issue all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I believe that our policymakers should work hard to rebuild our education systems with equity at the center. Well, that's why we have decided to implement the open source and open access principle, Peggy. So we have started to share with the public at large and with all the schools, all our document documentation openly in our website and in various platforms. And we are holding uh, parent seminars that's open to the access of the whole society. Mm -hmm. So as a school with inclusion, social responsibility and diversity among its values, uh, we have been also integrating community work at all levels in the school. And we have a community service unit that works with students from all levels. So we are trying to involve our students in various community projects, and such as providing mentorship to public schools. So we are, we are kind of trying to do our best to provide uh, mentorship to underprivileged groups. And we provide material support to the uh, uh, public schools from time to time. And one last thing I want to mention is that our counseling department designed a digital platform mm -hmm. and they call it SELF, Social Emotional and Learning Framework, to support the social emotional development and well-being of adults. And the purpose of the project is to reach the teachers in disadvantaged areas of Turkey by providing them useful resources and offering autonomous guidance system uh, where uh, teachers can learn how they improve uh, the social emotional skills. So uh, in short, uh, I, I can say that uh, we are doing our best to share and to really um, teach uh, uh, how we, uh, we do uh, teaching in schools to other groups. And we all know that we have to strengthen education as a common public good as the basic child right. Uh, certainly there are uh, big foundations, there are uh, NGOs, and they have large scale projects in place and they are trying to improve this locally, globally. Uh, but I think we should come together to develop joint projects to initiate a wider philanthropic movement and reach out to underprivileged areas all over the world. So. Um, so this is a kind of an invitation to all the schools around the world so that we can come together and really start uh, some open science, open access approach uh, to deliver to all the schools in the world. And that is a, a, a big part to play in developing responsible, conscious global citizens 
um, in our schools. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the pandemic a couple of times and the lockdown. So I can't help. This is a question, obviously, that's at the forefront of a lot of uh, educators um, of their, in our minds. And that has to do with the symptoms that students have as a result of the lockdown and the pandemic. And what do you notice in students yeah. and what do you think can be done? Yeah. Well, how COVID uh, impacted the education is a broad question, and I am afraid there is no single answer. And the answer and the level of optimism depends on the country, uh, the school, the student, and the family relations. Certainly, there are learning losses and mental health issues, but I believe the, that during pandemic, we have been forced to rethink education, and we have learned a lot, and I think we will be able to use uh, lessons learned uh, to heal uh, these problems. Well, in order to understand the impact of the virus on student learning and achievement, we carried out a research to compare students' academic achievement and growth during the pandemic to the achievement and growth in a typical school year before the pandemic. Of course, uh, based upon the empirical data and the historical data, we were able to show that students' learning gaze is below the learning gaze uh, in a typical school year. However, the performance of individual students was consistent. The successful students were able to adapt themselves aptly to online and uh, hybrid uh, learning and used all online instruments successfully, reducing the learning loss losses considerably. So uh, once the school is open, we have been able to observe uh, big differences between uh, the learning gains of individual students. Of course, when we look at the developmental levels of the students during the pandemic, well, uh, uh, it's, it was seen that there were delays, especially in the social, social and emotional field at all levels at all school levels. Mm -hmm. And we can assume that the source of students' behavior problems may be due to the anxiety, fear, losses, changes in the order, changes in the roles in the house caused by the pandemic. And it's known that the belief of I'm in danger and I'm not in control causes difficulties for children to control their impulses. Therefore, due to the increase in anxiety levels, more aggressive impulses are being observed in students unfortunately. And we are observing regressive behaviors and anxiety at preschool, primary, and secondary school levels. And we observed that problem-solving skills didn't develop due to the lack of peer interaction and lack of social experience. And we have found out that the students needed more support in promoting planning, focus, and self-regulation skills. Well, in addition to social skills in the preschool and primary school, we observed that self-care skills were also left behind. And students constantly asked for support from the teachers. Yeah. And however, uh, students in high school were more concerned about their future. Mm -hmm. The fact that there, there were ambiguities regarding the boundaries between home and individual had really uh, uh, negative effects on adolescents' identities. And so you can, uh, you can list many, many uh, uh, negative observations. But how do we solve these problems? How are we trying to solve these problems? Well, we are organizing individual and group support activities for all students. Some of them are individual, some of them are in group, group, group groups. And according to their uh, uh, needs, uh, academic needs and uh, socio-emotional needs. And of course, teachers and uh, psychological counselor, counselors work together collaboratively. And all academic faculty and psychological counseling departments have been receiving supervision themselves. So, I mean, uh, I, I mean it's, it's quite a challenging period and uh, the whole school is trying to help and support uh, the students. And of course, um, there are uh, many differences in family approaches. So 
we now uh, keep our uh, mutual communication with our parents strong. Uh, and they are uh, also more concerned, more anxious. They are controlling more. Uh, so that's why we are trying to work very closely with families. Yeah. And we invite external uh, experts and conduct informative seminars and share informative newsletters. So, I mean, uh, parents uh, are also a part of this uh, whole process uh, and our psychological counselors are trying to reach out to the parents and uh, they are organizing sometimes groups, sometimes uh, individual meetings. Uh, I'm an optimistic person. Uh, I hope uh, and I believe uh, this uh, nightmare will be over and uh, all our students and the youth and the future of our countries will recover successfully. Yes, yes, I agree with you 100%. And I think that's a great place to end this conversation because you once again touched on a very important partnership, the partnership between the school and the parents and the students and what we call at ACSD the, the, um, the, the golden triangle. Um, yes. Because I think that way, if we're all aligned, we can definitely succeed uh, much better in supporting student needs, um, having gone through this difficult time. Well, I want to yeah. thank you so much for joining us here today. It certainly yeah. has been an enlightened conversation, and uh, I look forward to many more through our partnership. Thank you for being here, Dr. Barbara. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me here. I also look forward to really uh, very successful initiatives. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.